What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick modeling tutorial for you. So today we're going to come in here and we're going to model uh, kind of a glass observatory shape with some wood timbers. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a 12 sided circle. So to draw a 12 sided circle you're just going to tap that C key and then type in, you see in the corner where it says number of sides, just type in 12 and hit the enter key. That means that you'll draw a 12 sided circle in here. So, and then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this origin point right here and we're just going to draw a circle with a, we'll call it a 15 foot radius, just like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a guideline right off the center, just like this. And we're going to draw this guideline to a height of, we'll call it 12 feet for right now. Let's see how that works. And then we're just going to draw an arc between the top of our guideline and the edge right here along this red axis. So, and then what you want to do is you want to move your mouse until this, uh, so we want to draw this arc right here. We want to draw this so that when it bulges out like this, um, that it's basically bulging um, along the path that we want to create our uh, wood timbers. So basically what they're going to do, um, and you see how I'm having kind of issues with this locking and inferencing and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw this as a rectangle over here and then just draw this arc along this face. That way I'm not going to have to deal with all the, with all of it jumping around with the inferencing and stuff like that. So just kind of draw this along the path that you'd like your, um, that you'd like your wood truss to follow just like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this arc, we're going to use the move tool to make a copy out here of this arc line. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to select the perimeter of this 12 sided circle. Then we're gonna activate the follow me tool and click on this face right here. So you can see how what that did is that extruded that face in a circle all the way around, all the way around this circle just like this. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to model our, we're going to come in here and we're going to model our wood pieces. So all you're going to do is you're just going to come in here and you're just going to rough these out. So in this case, I'm going to draw a rectangle right along here that's four inches wide. You know what? We'll make it six inches wide. Just like this. So now we have this rectangle right here. So once you've drawn this rectangle, what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to select this path, activate the follow me tool, and then click on it just like this. So, and then one thing we're probably going to do because this wasn't, uh, this didn't come in here and necessarily make this flat like I would have liked it to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're just going to kind of square this off a little bit. So we're just having to do a little manual manipulation of this face, but you just kind of square that piece off. You may have to do the same thing on the top up here because I don't think it necessarily did that up here on the top like we would have liked either. So So we've got kind of our truss shape in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select that. We're going to right click on it. We're going to make that a component. And we can just call this arch or whatever we want to call that. But next thing we're going to do now is we're going to come in here. I'm going to turn hidden geometry on because it helps with the inferencing and everything here. And then I'm just going to create a copy of this that kind of sits on the inside of this face. And you need to make sure that this actually you can kind of see how this is a little problematic because it's kind of on this uh, corner right here. All we're going to do is we're just going to move this so that it's sitting right inside this shape just like this. So, and let's go ahead and take a look at this top piece. And the top piece isn't necessarily quite where we want it to be either. So I'm just going to use the scale tool to kind of make it a little bit smaller. So and you can see how I just kind of adjusted that right there with the scale tool to make it fit on the inside. This doesn't have to be super 100% precise. Um, I just want it to be sitting inside these faces just like this. So now what we've got is we've got this, um, we've got this kind of truss or arch shape 
in here. Now we're going to use the rotate tool to come in here and make some copies of this. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. Because I've had some issues in here where uh, I've had some problems with SketchUp crashing when I use the rotate tool to make copies. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to activate the uh, rotate tool by tapping the Q key. And then move your mouse up to this top point right here. And you can see how it kind of like tries to lock to all these different faces. Just tap the up key on your keyboard to lock this to the blue axis. And then find this center point like this. Tap the control key to activate copy mode and then move your mouse just like this so that you can make that copy. All right, so you can see what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm putting my mouse over this center point just like this. I'm tapping that up key to lock this to the blue axis and then basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a copy of it. So you can see how right now if I just move this it'll just rotate this but what I want to do is I want to rotate this just like this so I create a copy along every one of these pieces. So you're going to rotate this to the next point and then you're going to type in times 12 or times 11 and hit the enter key. And so what that did is that created 11 copies of this arch um, in this circle plus my original that makes 12 so now I have 12 of these along this piece right here. So that's kind of making up my wood timber pieces right here. You can see how I've got that in there. I like the way that this looks. We may come in here and edit this uh, this kind of intersection in here a little bit later. But for right now, we're just going to kind of leave it the way that it is. All right, so there's two ways to do this next piece. So the first way to do this is to use an extension called Selection Toys by TomTom. Tom. And what you can do is you can triple click on this object to select everything in your object. And then you can come in here and deselect the faces. And what you can do then is you can move basically all of this hidden geometry over here you can create a copy so that it's not hidden anymore then you can use that to create your uh, your glass mullions for your glass in here so that's one way to do that I'm actually gonna do this a different way I'm gonna use an extension called quad face tools so what quad face tools does is it's basically designed so if you look at this model right here, this object is made up of quads. So, and what quads are is quads are faces that have four sides like this. And this is a toolbox created by TomTom Tom to work with that. But specifically what I'm worried about on this one is I'm going to use a tool called Select Loop. And so basically what Select Loop does is if I come in here and I select this piece right here and I click Select Loop, it's basically gonna look and see if there's any areas in the model where this hidden geometry creates a full loop so it goes all the way in a circle across a face like this so what that did is that just selected this horizontal piece just like this and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that piece then I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna select this upper piece and click select loop again and I'm just holding control selecting this geometry and then clicking the select loop option and you can and you can see how what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's letting me select all just the horizontal loops in here. Just like this, because I don't really want the vertical ones because I don't want to create a mullion along those vertical ones. Um, I mean, you definitely could, but in this case, I don't really want that. With one exception. And the one exception is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select one of these points as a part of this as well because I want something that ends on the top here so I have an inference point in here. But all I'm going to do now is I'm going to activate the move tool in copy mode and I'm going to move this off to the side just like this. So you can see how now what I've got and I wish this would have done that along the red axis but it's alright we can fix that. We'll just kind of use inferencing to kind of move this off to the side just like this. But you can basically see what I'm doing is I'm using this line that I left on the top to let me keep everything kind of, to let me keep everything lined up with this piece right here. So I'm using this line right here as the point, the guide point that I'm using to move everything around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the extension lines to tubes. 
So, and we've used this extension a bunch before. I think you can get that in the Sketchication warehouse. But Lines to Tubes basically comes in here and it lets you create basically a tube along all of these lines. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this four-sided and see what that does. Oh, I probably left it too big. Yeah, I did. So I've got all of these lines selected. And you notice I deselected this top line right here. But basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to click this Convert Arcs, Lines, Circles, Curves to Cylinders option. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a four-sided one inch tube along all of these. So you can see what that did is that came in here and that basically extruded a rectangle along all of these paths just like this. So now I've got this geometry in here and I can select everything just like this and then I can use my guide point to move this back right along this face right here. So now what I've got is I've got this kind of rectangular geometry along my face just like this. And so now when I come in here and I look at my glass, and I'm going to turn hidden geometry off, but now if I come in here and I look at this, I've got my wood trusses in here, um, and we'll color these up in a minute. I've got my uh, metal mullions, and then I've got my faces, which I'm going to turn into glass. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to apply some materials to this. So I'm going to apply a wood veneer material to all of these pieces just like this and it may make sense for you to come in here and put all of these um, arches in here in a group so that'll just make them easier to deal with so now if I come in here and I change the materials it'll let me do that for all of these right here and then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select my I'm gonna go ahead and select my face just like this and I'm gonna apply a glass material to it just like this and then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply kind of a darker color like a black to these mullions oops here we go just like that so now I've got this cool kind of glass observatory shape and the last thing I may do so I may come in here and this you can either adjust your field of view because what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to see the top of this observatory piece just like this um, with my camera. So you can either adjust your field of view using the zoom tool and all you have to do to do that is hold the shift key just like this and then click and drag and you can see how that lets you see more stuff in your model. You don't want to do that too much because you can see that causes some distortion but you can do it a little bit just like this. The other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could just select everything and just kind of scale it down a little bit. So once you've drawn this, if you wanted this to be a little flatter, you could just come in here and select everything and use the scale tool to make everything a little bit shorter, a little more rounded, stuff like that. So it's really easy to come in here and start making those edits. And if you wanted to, you could come in here and you could kind of intersect these faces with your model and then come in here and just kind of hide all the intersections that are in here just to kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, you could hold the control key to kind of smooth everything as well but now you don't have all that extra line geometry in here. Anyway that's where I'm going to end today's video so leave a comment below let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Um, you know do you have some ideas for some areas where you might use something like this? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here Remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. In any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.